Friday night did naked rambler Stephen Goff spend in prison during his first hike across Britain in 2003? The answer was 140. That's right. Uh, during his first naked ramble seven years ago, Stephen Goff was arrested 15 times and spent 140 nights in prison, mostly in Scotland, but I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> now, I think this could be a one half sounds laughable, but I do think there's a really serious point beneath it. What would you do with the naked rambler Stephen Goff? You could beg him to put clothes on, you could jail him for refusing, but he still won't conform. And now the authorities in Scotland are warning the 50 year old that he could effectively end up spending the rest of his life behind bars unless he pulls his pants up. I mean, literally. Uh, Goff's already spent much of the last four years uh, locked up on countless charges of breaching the peace, including two spells for leaving prison without any clothes on. Uh, he's appeared. <laughs> truly. They arrested him at the gates. He's appeared in court naked. He's done his time behind bars in the buff. A far braver man than I. Uh, and his latest taste of freedom, in fact, lasted just 30 seconds when he was released at Christmas. I think it was on Christmas Day, but was rearrested at the prison gates for, yes, being in the nuddy. So, the uh, sheriff, uh, Scottish Sheriff Lindsay Foolis, I think it is, has offered Goff the chance to go home to Hampshire so long as he wears some clothes, but he just won't do it, saying that his, his protest is about individual freedom. I mean, I'll say it again, what do you do with a guy like this? Do you keep locking him up like a murderer? Do you, do you ignore him? Uh, do you send him for psychiatric reports, which is what they're doing at the moment, and then what, put him in a mental institution? Uh, I guess it's a similar problem with, with the likes of Charles Bronson, Britain's most violent prisoner, whose sentence is constantly extended as he commits crime after crime while in jail. Stephen, though, hasn't had a fly. In many ways, that makes him less of a pain than a bloody-minded child, and there are plenty of them about. What do you do with someone who won't play by the rules, Dawn? I think we could all think of ways that we'd like to express ourselves as individuals mm -hmm. that might not be appropriate, mm -hmm. but the fact is, is that we can't, because we live in a world mm -hmm. full of other people. There's, you know, it's about self-control. He hasn't got any, and I know he's not hurting anybody, but he's, he's been told, and it's no one else is doing it, and it's about the fact that we have to have self-control. So you, you are saying, effectively, that an mental issues notwithstanding, I don't know whether there are or there aren't, you are effectively saying that the Scottish authorities are right to be, and they're quite open about it, that every time he breaches the, the law, he will be locked up. Well, how many warnings can one person have? Well, that's the point. If he's never going to change, is that the way you want to deal with the problem? Just coercion, keep locking him maybe up? coercion is a better tactic with him. I mean, with a, child, with a child who will not do what you want them to do, and, and obviously they are trying to express their free will, you kind of distract them with, with, with games and things or try and coerce them so they can cooperate. Give them an iPhone. <laughs> yeah, so I wanted to so say, I did think about this. I, I know it's a very serious issue, but maybe you but could... But it's, it's, it's... Lots of people have a good laugh at it, myself included, but at the root of it, I think there is something very There is a very serious... I mean, I'm amazed he went back in on Christmas, he went out naked. I mean, it's freezing up there yeah, in Scotland yeah, yeah. as well. I mean, I might send him to an open prison in Siberia. And see, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it's minus 50 in your cuts today, so that would be quite serious for him. But, no, I mean, j joking aside, maybe try and get him to cooperate. So, because at the moment, he feels like he's been, you know, it's a, it's a vindictive campaign yeah, against martyr, him. Yeah. And he's a martyr. So try and to be inclusive about it and say, look, not everybody appreciates seeing you naked wandering around our country. And if at the end of all of that, he still refuses to put his clothes well, on? Well, then my distraction technique, maybe you could play something like unstripped poker with the, the, the jail guards and so he, by mistake he ends up with clothes on <laughs> and they go, this is, this is fun. That's genius. That's genius. Genius. Um, I mean, isn't there some sort of naturist commune or community yeah, he doesn't, that he, he doesn't could... want? He doesn't want to do any of that. He just wants to, he wants to walk around Britain naked. That's what he wants to do. Well, that's not... Is it, let me, let's flip this on his head. Is it acceptable that we treat someone like this by locking them up all the time. Is that, is that the solution? Yeah. I mean, one, it's costing us 25, 30 grand a year. That's what it costs to lock someone up in prison. So it's costing us money, right? And no one's winning. And he's, and he's hurt no one. Is that acceptable to keep locking him up? I'm not sure it is. Well, I'm not sure it is either, but then do we put him under house arrest, again, at the cost of the taxpayer? Or do you put him in, in, in another, another institution? Uh, or do you just ignore it and say, Well, that's, carry on. you know, no, no. I, I think, ignore, I mean, are his genitals that offensive? Well, I genuinely think, is it I really... I actually that saw him it? once. Have, I, was just, I, I was about I to ask it. Then. Years and years and years ago, when I first moved to London, I was sitting in a cafe and, well, I presume it was him, a naked man with shoes and boots on... Must have been him. Strutted, <laughs> strutted past me. And I, all my thought, little Guernsey girl over here, I just went, 
Oh my God, is that what London's like? <laughs> <laughs> but, but, so, but so, having to, have, uh, the only one here that's actually witnessed him, were you offended? No, I wasn't offended. I thought he was really odd and really weird, and I didn't really want to go anywhere near him. But he certainly wasn't offensive. He wasn't getting in anyone's way. He was just walking around. It was slightly disturbing, and I wouldn't like my children to see him. There are plenty of disturbing things in London. Yeah, uh, that's that, true. Uh, there is no doubt. Listen, time is short. Let's get at least one call in if we can, please, Kirsty. Uh, on my mum, we have Helen. Helen, good morning. Good morning, Matthew. Uh, what would you do with him? Um, well, I'm not against him, because I don't think you have to look down at his private parts, you can look at him in the face. Right. Um, but I think he should keep pants or trousers on, because if he does go to jail here, he'll want to keep them on then long term. Absolutely. But, I mean, he's been in jail countless times, and uh, he doesn't seem to be bothered by that. Yeah, but in Scotland, if you're in jail a long time, I think he would want to keep his trousers well, on. Well, no, I'm saying he's been in jail in Scotland for loads of times. Uh, well, I don't know. I mean, it's down to him. I mean, I I'm not against it. I mean, like I said, you know, everybody's got... A human form, and I'm not against it. You know, people don't need to take offence. They don't have to look at him. They can keep um, look at it in his eyes if they walk past mm. him. They don't have to. So, look at are, are you saying ignore him? Yeah, I am. But if they ignore him, won't more people do it? More nature. There's a lot of oh. oh. worse crimes out there I, than a man walking around naked. I mean, my, yeah, but, but also, if you, you can uh, avo avoid, you know, looking down below, we're like children. They can't, you know, can't look into his eyes, can they? I'm fascinated with things like that, anyway. And I just, you know, and at the end of the day. Children, I don't think it's going to offend a child. Yeah. I'm free to okay. ramble, free to dangle is what I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but also, but why is it just the and... boys? Well, I mean, the, you know, the, the people who want to no, get... No, he had a, girl, he had a girlfriend. He had, he had a real hot girlfriend, Melanie. Oh. Melanie Roberts, but she walked off. You've got that right, in there, right? Right? Yeah. <laughs> right. Matthew, Matthew, <laughs> Matthew, to yeah. show some kind of solitude and solidarity, we should join him in his protest. Yeah, what, yeah, now, yeah. in this weather? You... On the show, no. Now. No, it's not that kind of a show. No, but it is weird, isn't it? Because I've said Jodie Marsh, for instance, can turn up to a oh, party in London dear. wearing absolutely nothing. She doesn't get arrested, does she? No, so no. it seems to be they've taken a particular umbrage with this man who likes being naked. Yeah. So what? Yeah. We've all got things. Let's just I think. ignore him. I just, I just think I don't want to be part of a society where we keep locking somebody like that no. up. It just doesn't. It just doesn't seem right. Anyway. Thank you for your calls. And that uh, is the panel part of today's show, pretty much done and dusted, I have to say. Our dream girl, Davina McHale, is still to come. Uh, first, though, it's a goodbye to the panel. Mark, best Thank of luck with Gutted. Tip-top guest, as per usual. The Thank right you. Stuff. Shit. Uh, uh, over on home, every weekday evening at nine. Stephen and Dawn, we'll see you tomorrow for more of the same. Give it up for our panel, then, <laughs>